definitely. Six o'clock. We'll call this meeting to order. First up is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. We'll go ahead and proceed with roll call. Brooks? Here. Fish? Hausman. Here. Jo Jones. Here. McInerney. Here. Wells. Mayor Beasley. Here. All right. We have a quorum, so I will entertain a motion in a second for the agenda as it appears before us. Second. I have a motion and a second for the agenda. Questions or discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, I know we should have done that before, but we'll just continue on. Um, approval of the minutes, please. So moved. Motion from Jones, second from McInerney to approve the minutes of the September 14th briefing and the September 18th meeting. Any questions or discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? And with that being said, we'll go to the approval of the claims. Which I will entertain that. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion from Hausman, second by Brooks, to approve the claims for October Second, any questions or discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? All right. Visitors and timed items. Anybody? We have nothing on the, our agenda, but you are allowed five minutes if you so desire. All right. Going once, twice. All right. Old business is the second reading of Ordinance 554 of rezone property described as Track 2, False Edition, which will now become 1000 South Sioux Boulevard, False Land. And Justin is here to answer any of our questions. Hey guys, Justin Oakland. I'm with Oakland Homes, 312 East Holly Boulevard here in Brandon. Um, I guess there was really no concerns that I sensed at the first reading. It seemed like everybody was good with it. Blaine, I know you weren't present. Um, so I guess we'd just be asking for approval to begin working on um, engineer design plans and such. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve. Any in the crowd that wishes to address us? Questions or anything? If not, I have a motion from, it's escaped me for just a second, John McInerney, second by Jones. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. All right, thank you, Justin. Thanks, Justin. You guys are making some nice progress on, uh, on Aspen, too. Yep, I saw it, and it's all blacktopped. Keep going, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> All right. You bet. Uh, item eight, golf course. They're fall playing. Rates, yeah, yep. Start. Fall rates are on there. It's advertised in the paper. Yeah, fall rates went in last week, I think. Yep, it's been in the paper. People are playing still. Today? No, I didn't see 
anybody today. Yeah, today or earlier. Police. I see the chief back there. Uh, moving forward with the interviews, but uh, nothing further. Okay, very good. Item 10. We have the maintenance report from the park. I see Devin back there also. Um, item 10B, we have a, some proposed financing for Aspen Park concession and restroom building. Uh, so if I could go ahead and make my uh, committee report, is that okay? Certainly. Okay. So this uh, Stone Ridge playground equipment has been ordered. So it will be coming in shortly, and we think that we'll be able to install it ourselves. So save us a little bit of money. Um, we are working on a public discussion survey. So we'd like to put a survey out, I don't know, on the website, in the newspaper, probably in the utility billing, various ways, and see what priorities our residents think we should be focusing on from a park standpoint. I think that'll just give us some good input to make sure we're going down the right path. Um, we are evaluating um, vending machines that we use at the pool this year rather than having um, staff in the in the facility with the um, food. And we're also looking at the cost of passes and lessons. They haven't been updated in, since, since 2012. Not saying that we're going to increase them, but we're just evaluating them. Um, we would like to get approval to buy some software for the swimming pool registration, and that would handle the, the families and kids coming in to swim, and it would also um, handle the swimming lessons. And Christine has done a bunch of research on it. We can sign up online. First year, be a little bit of work, right, Christina? Uh, to get everything input, but then once that happens, it'll be a lot easier rather than having the, what did we used to have on the towels, the little patches yeah the little patches There's little patches so I'll circle back around for that in a minute um, we have applied for a community foundation grant for Stone Ridge Park and uh, that was supposed to be in at the end of September so we'll see if we're awarded anything for that uh, the Aspen Park groundbreaking was really well attended um, that was for the uh, for field a so that was exciting to see that happening um, the funding for the concession stand, um, we were about $100,000 short. We had seven bids that came in, all very comparative, so we're confident that the bids are where they should be. We just, they're just higher than we had hoped. And so we went in, the park board went in and looked at our budget for next year. And we're going to, if with your approval, we'd like to defer the, the bathroom and the shelter at Stone Ridge to the following year. And then poor Devin is going to lose his skid loader <laughs> for, for next year. And then that affects the golf course because they're going to take Devin's old golf course. So we're trying to um, stay within our budget but still get that concession stand done. Um, so if that's agreeable to the council, we would appreciate your support on that. I do have Chris Brown here um, from the Baseball Association, and he just wanted to um, share a few comments about the Field A renovation. So come on up, Chris. You press the purple button, Chris. Thank you. Good. All right. Uh, as Barb said, my name is Chris Brown. I'm our sponsorship rep for the Brandon Valley Baseball Association. So um, Barb just invited me in tonight to give you guys a little bit of an update on where the project is at as of today and then some of the things that are already happening due to the project uh, going ahead down at Aspen Park. So um, with that being said, the work is on schedule. Um, I think if you've been down there, you've seen there's quite a bit of work that's been done already. Um, the infield is already graded. They're starting to put the curb in for the turfing system. Um, the weather's not cooperating as of today, obviously, but they're moving ahead with that. Um, the outfield has been tilled up. There was uh, one uh, change order that we're going to have to incur on that as an association. Um, we came down and talked to Brian and Paul about what was going to happen in right field to help um, drain the field, essentially. And we're going to actually level that area out so the field will actually drain out into the parking lot and then down into that lower area. 
So that'll be a change order that we'll incur through uh, first rate is who we use to do the excavating on that. So that's just something we'll deal with on the financial side on our side. But all parties agreed that that was the best route to do out in right field. Because we actually had about a three foot drop from right field to left field. And they just couldn't figure out a way to grade it so it would actually leave the facility. So those changes are being made. Those dollars will all be handled by us as an association. Um, as of today, just some of the things that are happening that we've done, um, we're in talks right now with the University of Sioux Falls and South Dakota State to use the facility next year if their fields aren't ready. Um, generally in the spring here with college baseball, infields that are of natural surface aren't ready to go in the spring. So um, the head baseball coach at USF is actually a director for our association, so obviously we have a close relationship with him. And then through my contacts with South Dakota State, I had a chance to sit down with Rob Bishop, the head coach, and talk to him about the potential of bringing SDSU games here. Nothing guaranteed, but like I said, we're in talks with them to potentially have those events come to town. Um, we're partnering with Renner to host a Legion tournament. Um, invitations have been sent out to North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Iowa, and Minnesota to attract teams to that tournament. We're super excited about that. That'll be Father's Day weekend. And that will take place here. We're going to move our 14U tournament out to Valley Springs that weekend, but we're going to have the Legion tournament here in town. So that'll coincide with our Sunshine Foods tournament. But like I said, we're really excited for that opportunity for our kids to play good competition and not have to travel to Fargo or Des Moines or Omaha to do it. They'll come to us. So as of right now, we have 11 teams that have said yes. We're looking for five more for a 16-team tournament at, at Renner's facility and then our facility here in Brandon. <clears throat> um, as an association, um, we've already started to receive registrations for our tournaments next year, which is really exciting. We host four tournaments every year. May, June, or April, May, June, July is our, three, is our four tournaments, and we've already seen registrations coming in for those. So we haven't even um, approached those people, though, as of yet with our new facility. So we're hoping that those will bump up. And then with the Legion tournament coming to town, we're hoping to bring some out-of-town teams, like I said, that have younger kids also, who in turn then will bring those, those teams along to our facility to, uh, to play here in Brandon. Um, we're scheduling rookies, machine pitch, minors, and majors days at the park. So all teams will get to play at the facility. So those will be on Saturdays and Sundays. We'll have one day that's a rookies day, one day is a machine pitch day, one day minors, one day majors. So those are our local kids. But they'll all have an opportunity to play at that field because we're actually building it that we'll, we'll be able to put in bases at 60 feet, 70 feet, 80 feet, and 90 feet. So the field will suit all kids in our association. So we're excited about that. 80% um, of our Legion team's games and our 13 and 14 year old games will be at that facility. So 13s, 14s, obviously because they can't drive. So they have to stay here in town. And generally in our association, about 9 out of 10 kids are from Brandon. Usually about one per team is from Valley Springs. So that's why we made that decision. And then obviously part of the approach to this whole thing was to bring our high school and Legion teams back here to Brandon to play. So, but we're also not going to abandon Valley Springs. They've been wonderful to us. They've been a great facility, and they still want to see varsity games out there. So we will still play some varsity doubleheaders in Valley, which then in turn will allow us to bring our junior legion and our 16 new teams and let them play at our new facility here in Brandon. So roughly about 20% of their games will be here in town at the 16U and junior legion level because those kids can drive. So they can utilize that facility out in Valley Springs for practice and for games. So, you know, as an association, we're just we're grateful for this public-private partnership. I think it's gone wonderfully so far. You know, we appreciate all the support we've received from the city, obviously all the support we've received from you guys as a council. So we're, um, we're excited to push ahead. Um, you know, there's work to be done. We hope the snow doesn't fly till about December. If we could uh, predict it, then that would be best case scenario for all of us. But we do, you know, as, as a whole, we do believe that this project is doing you know what the sign says it's building a better life here in Brandon so we're excited for uh, the things that are ahead and if you ever want us to come in and give you an update where we're at or what we're doing please give us a call okay thank you very much thanks for the update yep and good luck on your building season <laughs> so if we if we could circle back um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the purchase of that software for the pool I believe we have seven thousand dollars in the budget for it um, and that would be in this year's budget. And that covers the expense of it? Yes. Okay, that was item D. 
on our agenda. Item D. Yeah, where we haven't got B yet, C yet, yeah. or D yet. Oh, I almost have an old agenda. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry. Okay, never mind. Okay, okay yeah. never mind. Table that motion. All right. Thank you for your update, though, on the, on the park. Um, item B is the proposed financing for the Aspen Park concession and restroom. And I think that's the sheet that we have right here. Correct? So I would make a motion that we, um, do we have to make a motion? It's in the budget. It's, yeah. in, it's in the budget, just reallocation from different yes. projects. So if you want to, you can certainly authorize the, the change in expenditures. Okay. So um, I would make a motion that we defer the, the restroom shelter at Stone Ridge and the skid loader until a future date and use that money to uh, finish up the concession stand at Aspen Park. A motion from Fish, second by Jones, to defer some payments and reallocate some money to continue to finish a project, a building project at Aspen Park. Any questions or discussion? Devin's back there with tears in his eyes, losing his skid steer. But if not, any questions? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 10C, we have pay app number one for Aspen Park concession and restroom. Pay app in the amount of $14,274. Basically a mope charge or a percentage of mope charge. Mm -hmm. Motion from Fish, second by McInerney to approve pay app number one to RCM services to get started on the Aspen Park concession and restroom building. Questions or discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Now we have item 10D, pool software program proposal. I'll make a motion to approve <laughs> the pool software program. Second. I have a motion from Osmond, second by Brooks, to approve the pool software program. That will help us with registration of all things with the pool. Any questions or discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Anything else, Parks? No. All right, moving on to administration. P and Z Thursday. All right. Item 12, we have our maintenance work report there. Um, I know. We, I'll take a quick look, but I'm assuming we're probably waiting for a few more leaves to come down before we fire up the O Street Sweeper and head it down the, the streets of Brandon. Sure. Okay. All right. Yes, they will. Um, item 12B, we have Road Guide Construction Pay App 1. And final for the seal coat project. I'll make a motion to approve, Mayor. Second. A motion from Hausman, second Jones, to approve pay up number one for road guide construction for seal coat. Mm -hmm. Questions or discussion? He did a great job. Yes, he did. If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, then we have change order number one, Brandon Park. Edition. Mr. Brown. Uh, this change order is for Brandon Park Edition. This is for what we ended up with is some unstable subgrade out on uh, Sylvan Circle Project Phase 2, basically. And what this was was we ended up swapping out our gravel for crushed concrete. And so that difference in cost is what you see there of about... Uh, $5,700, and uh, that was something that administratively Paul and Brian uh, had approved that, but this is 
going through the formal process of getting that approved. Um, and then also uh, there will be, you know, the, there's only a couple of items left on our punch list. So that project will be closed out very soon. And so there should be some credits coming anyway on that project. So there's gonna be some credits coming as well when we zero out the project, so. I'll make a motion to approve. I have a motion from Hausman, second by Brooks, to, for change order number one, Brandon Park edition. Questions or discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We have item 12D, Sukup Construction Payout number four for Brandon Park edition. This is a progress payment uh, for work completed on the project. We'd recommend approval and uh, authorization for payment. Um, I have a motion from Hausman, second by Jones, to approve pay up number four to suit up construction. Questions or discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? All right, then item E. We have a proposal for improvements in the alley behind Pizza Ranch. If you look on page 31, of your packet. It shows uh, we will be installing curb and gutter along the east side of the asphalt parking lot behind Family Furniture and uh, Pizza Ranch. This was part of an agreement that we had when we purchased. If you look at lot 1B, it's a little triangular piece shape. Uh, that was part of the purchase agreement that we would install curb and gutter to control runoff off of that parcel across those properties. Uh, we'll install curb and gutter. <coughs> we'll remove some old concrete that's in there. I believe there's an old car wash there at one point in time. Yes, there was. And then we will backfill with black dirt and seed. The uh, low bid was submitted by DNK Construction for fifteen thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Yep, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. A motion from Hausman, second Jones to. Approve the improvements behind the pizza ranch and family floors, the alleyway. <laughs> Any questions or discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Um, item F, extension of Meadowbrook Trail. Council had asked staff to talk to meet with the property owner and the developer of the Bluffs and Eagle Creek about the extension of Meadowbrook Trail. We sat down and spoke with them. Neither one of those have current plans to extend and connect up Meadowbrook Trail to Heritage. It's about a thousand linear feet. Cost estimate, at least what we normally use, is about $450 a foot, so somewhere around $450,000 for construction of the improvements. So, well, and, and they are not willing to sell it at this point in time. So if they are unwilling to sell it, unwilling to develop, the only avenue that the city really has is to condemn the property and move forward. That would increase the cost. I, we haven't looked at that price. I know there's people in the audience here that probably are, are concerned about that because that would alleviate some of the congestion on Holly and Sandstone intersection and whatnot. Um, so what are our options other than a just a, a forcible condemnation? condemnation? Yes. With the, you know, there is an alternative to that, putting that street in, and that would be to, to improve the intersection of Sandstone and urbanize that and put the, uh, the traffic signal in there. Uh, or the other alternative would be to, because that was planned to have a signal at that intersection as well, or the other alternative would be to install maybe a temporary signal at that intersection rather than going through the condemnation process. Yeah, it was too close to the other one. Mm -hmm. I think they had planned to have one there too. So that's 
What about you? Don't remember it that way, Brian? I don't think so. No, I don't. I don't either. I don't remember it. Traffic that way. study, but I don't think sandstone was supposed to be signalized. Yeah, I don't think so either. But what about turn lanes? Turn lane constructed. Oh, maybe I misunderstood. But I don't, I'd, I'd have to look. I'll look back. Yeah, because I don't yeah, remember yeah, that. Yeah, I, 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 I know line. we've discussed mm -hmm. in past about <coughs> a signal there, but we always thought that yeah, we got the from the people that know about roads that it's too close to the one on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so what about touch. um? What about a turn lane, Ryan? Pardon? What about a turn lane there? The turn lane was in the traffic study that was done. 10 years ago, roughly, 2010 uh, There were traffic or turn lanes that were included in that sandstone intersection at some point in time. Um, I think Paul's, Paul's threw some numbers out, but I cannot remember what it was. We'll have to work with the county. Mm -hmm. Since it's, it's, it's their road. Half of their, half, half, is, of its, half is theirs. Yes. Um, I'd like to hear from, from the folks in the audience before yes. I put my two cents worth yes. in. My name is Matt Henning. I live at 1416 Creekside Circle uh, in Eagle Matt. Creek. Um, you know, this is the second time I've come to the council about this road. Um, I was here back in June. Um, I like the idea of a signal. It at least gives us a chance to get out because it, it's not about time sitting there. I, I'll sit there as long as I have to. It's about safety. We have to mash on the, on the, on the accelerator and jump out in front of 45 mile an hour traffic. Now, when the council uh, talked about this, I believe it was late July or sometime in June, I just can't remember when it was, uh, we asked the pol police chief to increase uh, police presence on that road. Uh, that was done, but now I feel like that has fallen off and we've lost that. So I'd ask the council to recommend to the police chief that there be more presence out there. I know the police are busy, but it is still uh, a city road in the city limits. Um, I, I do not uh, agree with the turn signal, or, or with the turning lane, excuse me, because I feel that that does not slow the flow of traffic down. That just keeps some zinging by us all the time while we're sitting there. Um, so that is my opinion. I'm not speaking for anybody else in the development. I'm speaking for myself. I would love to see the turning turn signal put in, not the turning lane. Thank you. Matt. Yep. So it's more a problem of trying to get out mm -hmm. rather than turning in. No. In the morning, if you want to go to Sioux Falls, right. it's getting out. Right. It's getting out. Right. And if you in the evening, if you are coming from Brandon and trying to get in that's so when that's, that's a problem, problem. so yeah. would that turn lane help in that respect no because the because the traffic's just going to keep flowing yeah, yeah. It, you've and got that and and down or we down. have a sign that says do not pass on the right you and guys put in the up. flashing one yep. it still doesn't matter doesn't. we still see people passing on the right i seen two of them here last week uh do it nobody has respect for anybody sitting there and i mean it's um it, it, it's, it's, I mean, it's time to do something. Uh, I've lived in that development for seven years and nothing has been done. Um, you know, we, we need some improvement to that intersection. And like I said, I like the street light idea. So. All right, thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thanks, Anyone else? Hello, I'm Mark Rechtenbaugh, 1505 Creekside Circle. Uh, I've been there 11 plus years now. Respectfully, I kind of disagree with what the last gentleman said. I think if we just had the cheapest alternative economically for the city, a turn lane heading west so we don't get rear-ended. We all bought that property knowing that that street should be put in, and if our developer doesn't want to, I guess as a city council, I'd come back to him and say, well, we just won't approve any more of your developments. You had it on your plan, you don't want to do it, you don't want to pay for it, then we just will hold all your developments until you do. That's how I solve that, I guess. Um, getting out, I'm not concerned with it. I bought the place knowing that it'd take me time to get out of there, that's fine. But when my kid comes home from school and that traffic is coming and he gets rear-ended, then I'll be upset. 
And I think there's enough road width now if we just paint the lines, widen the white lines out, and you put one turn lane to get into our development from the east, it'll alleviate the accidents. I understand time getting out is an issue also, but I think that's the cheapest alternative if we can't get Meadowbrook put in. Thank you. Thank you. Great comment. Um, and I did distribute a email that I had received from a resident out there too, so. I thought that was you out there, but I wasn't sure. Uh, Cami Gladys, 1320 Meadowbrook Trail. I've been here before too in regards to this issue. Um, I'm the one, I'm concerned more about getting out. <laughs> I have two little kids in the back of the car. I have to slam on my accelerator to get out and people do not slow down when they see me coming in. Um, I mean, they're both, both directions are an issue and I just feel like we need to come up with something to help. I don't know if there's been research done on reducing speed limits. I know in the past you said, you kind of, um, John, have mentioned that, you know, maybe that would be something to look into. Um, it's just, there's only going to be, be more traffic. Mm -hmm. So I feel like now is the time to try to figure out something to fix it. So. Thank yes, thank you. Anyone else? Um, look back at that, about the street light, or look at the uh, turn lane. I know coming this way, the turn lane would help, but it's the seven o'clock, 6.30 to 7.45 time to get out and left is, and then with all the construction on Rice Street also, it's bottlenecking things up too. So hopefully we can, we can figure out a way to solve this. If I may, Mayor. Yes, you may. You know, my background is uh, law enforcement, safety, and security. And, you know, there, there are a lot of safety issues that we're dealing with out there, certainly with the traffic. But I think the biggest thing that we're overlooking is the one entry and exit out of that development. If something happens to that entry or exit and it gets jammed up and we have an emergency within that development, we've got no alter alternate route. Um, I think that's certainly something worthy uh, to think of. Uh, do I like condemning land? Do I like moving forward with condemnation? No, I don't. I absolutely don't. I think that's absolutely worst case scenario. But uh, we've been dealing with this conversation for an awful long time. And uh, we have to get this fixed for these folks. I mean, it's just, it's that simple. We have to get this fixed. So we got to move forward. Oops. Yes, Matt. I just have one question. What is the council in the city doing for future developments to make sure that this doesn't happen again. That, that's my biggest question. I know uh, Creekside was supposed to go through and then a cul-de-sac got put in and, and this gentleman here had copies of Meadowbrook Trail going through. What is the council doing to make sure that this doesn't happen again? Well, on, on planning and zoning, they, they have to pr provide a preliminary plan that has to be approved <clears throat> showing their all their roads. Matt, and, and I think I can answer that question because I've brought that question forward to our engineer and to our planning and zoning people. And the question is, how did this happen? And what did we miss? Well, how it happened was, uh, there's been a lot of changes to planning and zoning as far as our regulations go, and then putting the new city, city engineer on as far as the checks and balances system. That checks and balance system wasn't there before. Um, you know, and I'm not, I'm not going to say who made the mistake or, or what happened, but I have been promised that that cannot occur again, that they can't come in after they've got those plans uh, okayed and just change them. So am I correct, Brian? Um, and that came from uh, Paul himself. Uh, I spent an hour in Paul Sano's office, um, you know, <laughs> pounding my fist on the desk saying, what happened here? How did this happen? And it was before Paul's time. So, I mean, it's granted, you've got to go back and, and do some history because I, I certainly am not a fan of that either. And you've heard me say that here. Um, but again, I, I'm not a fan of condemnation, but I'm not telling you that's not something that I certainly won't pursue. So yeah. nobody likes to spend $500,000, but you know, money is secondary in my opinion. 
uh, with this and and there's there's money out there and I think people need to uh, come forward that uh, had made the original change well I mean if we would go down that route not saying we will but I mean in the meantime these things always take forever um, what could we do in the meantime to alleviate some of the concern well I think that's where we're fall back to Brian or to Brian to do that research to see <clears throat> go back and, and look at that traffic study mayor as, as you would move forward and and certainly look at alternatives I mean um, I would like to think that they're temporary alternatives because I I'm going to continue to push forward for the extension of Meadowbrook Trail I just I am um, I've been squashed before but here I am again I'm back so uh, you know we'll move forward and see what happens yeah. yes can we put on the agenda for next meeting then okay. yes yes and we will. We will do the, our best. Is it possible to hold up some developments of his and maybe put a little pressure on him, or is that something we can't do? That's not a question that I can answer. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's difficult. I, you know, I guess I'm not. My personal opinion is uh, this is an ethical question, and, uh, you know, the one thing the good Lord gives us is our integrity, which we like to keep intact. Some of us like to keep intact. I'll put it that way. Some of us like to keep intact. Um, I am I'm a proponent for transparent government, um, and I don't think that you know us having to twist the arm of someone to get them to do what they're supposed to do um, is good government, but I'm only of one voice. Yeah, I I can't answer that question either about hold it, withholding. It, it'd be very difficult. Yeah, I, I would assume so. If developer comes in with a plan that meets all of our subdivision regulations, we don't have anything in there that says we can arbitrarily refuse to approve a plat or a preliminary plan. It would be a big problem. Yep. Yeah, so it's, yeah. I, I, judging by your facial expressions, Madam Lawyer, I, I knew we, we were kind of out there on thin ice. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a major enough road, though, that yes, you don't want to slow it down and no, the traffic we, signal. I, I think they, you'll have 10,000 other people other than 20 mad yeah. at you for that. So. Yeah. <laughs> and that, and we've, we've looked at the lowering the speed limit, and uh, it, all that is is just going to pile things back up. And it, we're, we're working on it, really. We, we truly are. We, we just, we'd like to get it right the first time. And I will tell you that I witnessed right in front of me uh, three days ago, two cars right in front of me go past the flashing sign, past the car on the right on the shoulder, and just keep right on and going. So, signs are uh, signs are good if people can read and people can pay attention, but they don't. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So you guys mentioned bringing this uh, issue up at the next meeting. Um, can I can I ask what are, what are we? You know, I, I'm I'm kind of keeping everybody in, in, in that it's not here up to date as to what's going on. So the next meeting, can I mean, do we know what's going to be talked about? Is, is there a possibility that a proposal is going to be made there? And well, if so, can we, can we make sure that we have a view of that uh, prior to the meeting? I don't think there'll be a proposal, no. certainly, for the next meeting. But I we'll think we're going to go back and look at that. If, if is it feasible to put this traffic like there? Is it feasible to have turning lanes in there? That, we're going to go back to the traffic study and get all the numbers that we need, and then we'll discuss it. Yeah, you bet. Because that's what I need. I'd like to at least see the study or talk to a traffic engineer. Because I'm not convinced extending heritage will help solve the problem. It certainly won't resolve it all. You know, you're still going to, yeah. in my opinion, need the turning lane and the signal to to, to resolve it completely. But if, if that's not feasible, then we got to go with what's best available. So. Yep. Okay, but yes, it, it is on the the will be on the agenda for the meeting coming up here the sixteenth. So okay. thanks, folks, for bringing that forward yes. again. Appreciate yes. that. All right, we have a resignation, and due to that resignation, we also have somebody that wants to come back and work for us. Yep, Brett Crum has submitted his resignation. Um, Effective October 12th. Make a motion to approve his resignation. Second. I have a motion from Hausman, second from Brooks, to approve the resignation of Brett Crum.
from the city. Any questions or discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Wish him best of luck from the council on his new endeavor. And with that said, we also have somebody that Mr. Bixby wants to come back, huh? Yes. Brent, we hired Brent as, as our electrician. Uh, Larry did have that position before he went to the school. Larry would like to come back and work for us, so we're recommending that we hire Larry at the same step that he was at when he left a year, year and a half ago. Uh, step 2810 of the salary scale. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion from Osmond, second by Jones to approve the hiring of Larry Bixby at step 28-10. Questions or discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? That was a lot in the streets. Is there anything else that we can cover in the streets? I see that going on too. So good. 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 That's it, Mayor. Thank you. Item 13, water and sewer. We have Sukup construction pay app number five, biosolid and cell removal regrading. This is a progress payment for grading and biosolids uh, work being completed on the biosolids project. That project is going. Uh, quite well until it started raining this weekend. Uh, they actually started moving a lot of dirt and actually uh, the biosolids have been removed now. So this is a, a partial pay request and we'd recommend uh, authorization and payment. All biosolids are gone. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'll make a motion to approve. Oh, second. Motion from McInerney, second by Hausman for approval of pay up number five on the biosolid and cell Regrading project. Questions or discussion? I guess it'll be interesting after tonight's rain event if we get as much as their forecast and if they have to pump any back to yeah. us or okay. have to wait and see here. If Sioux Falls shuts us off, you mean? Yeah. 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 With that being said, I have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Anything else? Water and sewer going on? <clears throat> Yes, sir. I would like to add, uh, we're working with Brian to get a PowerPoint presentation put together for the October 10th meeting, uh, just so you guys are aware of that. Uh, and we've been working on, uh, basically the, the presentation is going to really just touch on the, the uh, time schedule over the last 20 years or so of what's transpired on the water side and then also what's proposed going forward. So we're looking at a timeline for you know, from the past plus going forward, and then also just kind of a summary of where we're at with all of our just different uh, infrastructure on the water and sewer, or the water only at this yeah. point. I'm, I'm hearing, I'm not on there, but I'm hearing there's a lot of comments and questions on Facebook. I don't know if anybody could summarize those and just at least make, yeah. make sure they're all addressed in that presentation in some form or form. I don't want people leaving and saying, you didn't even answer X, Y, and Z. It, it has to be a fully productive meeting where, yeah, comprehensive is a better word, where, where people are leaving satisfied with that their questions got answered at least. So. We're going to also put together additional, um, we've been trying to capture those uh, comments as well and making sure that we have an answer to each of them. So uh, we'll actually have something in writing also like we did at the last meeting where we had the question and the answer. Uh, so that there's that handout plus we it, it, some of that stuff has been answered um, Already, but we'll try to make sure we we duplicate it again and get that information out there Thank you Anything else water sewer We're closing on the West water tower site on Friday Oh, Awesome information and then Excellent. Christine has scheduled a leaf drop-off day yeah there's three leaf drop-off days um, first one will be October 28th November 4th and November 18th so I'll okay. get that in the paper get that off to the uh, appropriate places that need that soon here so but those are up and coming those are popular days that our citizens enjoy being able to put their leaves there any other business before council with that being said, I will entertain a motion. Second. 
and a motion from Jones. Second from Hausman for adjournment. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, thank you.